We're, we're ready to go and uh, just wanted to uh, welcome everybody to our work session this evening. Um, first on our agenda, Miss Jeannie Wood. How are you doing, Jeannie? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. So I just wanted to propose a calendar change to you guys tonight. Um, right now, we have a remote learning optional workday scheduled on October 15th, which is a Friday. And it is also the Tuscola Pisgah football game. So in our proposal, we would like to make that Friday a regular school day and move the remote learning optional work day to Tuesday, October 19th. So kids and staff will all be on campus on the Friday of the game. Got to get the pep rallies in. When we made this calendar, we didn't know what the, what what the schedule, schedule was. Our right. schools have been classified and schedules yeah. weren't made. And we've made calendar changes, I think, for uh, worse reasons, like and, uh, internet internet <laughs> breaks and that kind of stuff. One more thing, you may get this question, but in the original calendar, the fall break was split into two weeks. So there was a Friday on one week and a Monday on the second week. And the reason we did that was when we developed this calendar, you probably remember, Mr. Francis, that um, our middle and high school students were on week A and week B. And so we wanted each to take one from each week. And But now, since we're all back to a normal schedule, I don't think it'll matter. And the proposed is the same fall break as the early college. So Jenny can answer any questions, but if fall break, if there's no objection, we'll bring that on Monday. I think which both which week is that fall break? Is that November? It will now, the, on the proposed, it will be um, October 18th and 19th. Of, Monday and Tuesday. Yes. Oh, okay, so that's for me. I got you. Okay, so I see what you're doing there. Instead of Friday, Monday, it'll be Monday, Tuesday. I see. With your approval. Any questions? All right. Yeah, just bring it for board action on Monday. You'll be fine. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the next thing we have is our first, uh, what we had talked about doing quarterly report on uh, ESSER or COVID-19 relief federal funding expenditures. Uh, you have that there in front of you, and I have a copy somewhere. And I have the trustee, the trustee federal programs person behind me who can let me borrow her copy, even though she's given me about three. Uh, so these are our federal funds. Uh, they may only be used on expenditures caused directly by COVID-19. You can, in some instances, go back and pay for something that you paid for with local funds earlier. There's not a ton of that going on, but some of that uh, is going on. Uh, you can certainly do it in the present. Uh, for example, we paid for summer school with these funds while summer school was going on. And in a few instances, if it's approved by the federal programs people uh, in Raleigh, we can do some preventative things. One of the things that we know we will be able to do uh, in the future is pay for some of our um, HVAC uh, upgrades uh, so we have uh, better air circulation and overall air quality. So let's start with ESSER 2 on the left. It actually came after ESSER 1, but it's on the left, and I think probably the easiest to describe. Lisa knows a lot more about this, so she may have to help me. She's got, she's got my back, literally, here in the meeting. So these are funds that we spent during summer school. Now, not these, this is not the total cost of summer school. Okay, but these are funds that we spent during June and July. Summer school ended today, so we had some expenses through today. And then you'll remember that the state legislature required us to pay a um, national board bonus for people who were nationally board certified if they agreed to work the uh, length of contract 
that we will do, and we will pay that uh, probably at the end of this month after we see that everybody worked the days that they uh, committed to work. Uh, and there may be a few expenditures that we're unaware of. So I guess not completely technical, but uh, to date uh, on summer school, we spent $635,495.16. That will be higher. And we knew it would cost a lot, and we talked about that when we were doing the planning. So uh, you can see supplies and materials there, uh, 2,600, almost 2,700 bucks. Uh, the teacher, um, there weren't really salary, salary, salaries, but the hourly pay, 372,000 plus um, cafeteria workers, uh, nearly 21,000. Uh, teacher assistants, little, just a little over 20,000. Bus drivers, 31,000, a little over 31,000. Uh, directors, uh, almost uh, 89,000. Clerical, this was some bonus money. You remember we talked about the bonus for the 12 month clerical. Uh, 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 2,700, a little over 2,700. Indirect cost, uh, some of you who uh, in your business may be familiar with indirect costs. That is a cost that you can charge to a grant or expenses that are there but are unseen in the grant. Things like having the lights on and making sure the telephones are working and the HVAC runs and all those kinds of things. So that's an indirect cost that we charged uh, to the grant, which will save us having to pay for those kinds of costs out of local funds. Uh, over 40,000, almost 41,000 in benefits. Uh, the software um, that we used mainly to communicate with parents, uh, uh, remind and other things. And so 635,000. So are there questions about uh, SR2? Lisa will bring um, on Monday, um, you have to, to resubmit your plans each year. And so she'll bring the new plan and that will be on the board agenda for Monday. Any questions with ESSER 2? Okay. ESSER 1, now you all probably will remember me telling you um, that we liked ESSER 2 better than ESSER 1 um, because uh, ESSER 1 had had this 163 line and then it had a bunch of other lines that were very specific to like EC and things like that. But out of ESSER 1, we've spent um, uh, nearly a half million dollars, 488,000. Uh, uh, we spend 175,000 on technology that was to replace Chromebooks that were damaged or lost and to have more Chromebooks when we started distributing them two marches ago, uh, uh, we were able to recoup some of the money that we paid to start the employee assistance program, and that has gone well, and Mr. Hines will provide a report on Monday night about that. We had some um, tutoring that we did uh, to uh, help students with learning loss. Um, during the year, mainly middle school and high school students, we were able to recoup a couple thousand dollars there. Uh, again, there's some indirect cost in the next line. Uh, over $15,000 in all the cleaning supplies that we purchased and bought. Uh, and then um, over 10,000 in maintenance supplies and repairs. And that is everything from um, bottle refill stations so students aren't drinking directly out of the water faucets to plexiglass barriers. Um, so a lot of things that maintenance, maintenance actually put together for us or purchased and installed. The next line is the athletic solvency and I want to give a little bit of a warning. We have submitted that and we have had people tell us that they think that that will fly but it has yet to be approved, okay? Um, so you all had made a commitment to make sure our athletic teams did not go under, and we may get really lucky 
and be able to cover that with ESSER one funds. That is not a done deal, okay? Uh, but that's there. And then um, we there's a private school equity amount where we are required to share these funds with private schools. We're glad to do that for them. Um, of 17,000, uh, almost 17,500, we have done that distribution. Transportation is the actual not paying the drivers but running the buses the gas the all the fuel the all those kinds of things that we did and then we had a remote learning stipend you will remember this is something that we agreed to pay out of um, school remediation funds because we did have a few teachers who were not only teaching students in front of them and went on their off week but they were also on their planning times picking up a remote section of whatever chemistry or whatever the remote section was and we think that one is going to fly okay. how am I doing you're doing great okay so so now I'm going to let you ask the hard questions to Lisa but uh, uh, and then I'll, as I said uh, she will bring on Monday re uh, revised plans for the next year that we're required to submit Brooke is actually going to attach those this evening, so you'll have them to review. Yeah. Well, they usually don't. That usually doesn't go out to about Thursday anyway. Yeah. So, any questions, board, about what has been spent thus far? It's tighter than you think. Lisa and I talked uh, earlier today that um, about every time she goes to a meeting, they seem to get tighter because they they uh, part of the and I'm stealing all of this from her. She gets all the credit for the stuff I'm saying accurately, but all of the titles, Title I, uh, Learning Assistance, Title II, Employee Training, Title IV, some of the stuff we've done at, uh, with our uh, high schools, with therapeutic services and other things, all the titles have to be related in somehow to instruction and not extracurricular activity. We think that's part of the pause on our athletic solvency. They're, they're thinking about all the other titles, and this is not one of those titles. This really is, um, did you have to spend money or was there a, an expenditure caused by COVID? And so I'll, I'll pause. I talk too much as it is and let you all ask questions. We'll try to answer them. I know that this year's summer school was expanded and everything else but normally what would we spend on that? you remember the just you remember the ballpark we get a budget from the state for that yeah I'll I'll give you a ballpark of what we had planned before we got ESSER money um, Mr. Henson we had planned um, another grant that we had received to spend probably 60,000 this summer and that was just going to be very very limited in scope though now on top of that you gotta understand we get we got money for RTA which is a whole separate um, pot of money read to achieve which is for our kindergarten through second grade that's a whole different so when you add those two together um, I, I just want to say what a couple hundred thousand yeah maybe close to three between this, two and three hundred thousand. that was no high school at all um, and again, we were only planning that to do, um, to expand that to math, um, just some math in elementary and some math remediation, very small scale in sixth and seventh grade. Of course, we never did that. And that we've not in the past offered summer school um, to that extent for secondary at all, just the required read to achieve from the state for our earliest, our youngest elementary students. And this number will be higher because we still have learning that occurred this week and we still have the national board and how many students did we end up we registered over 900 we did um, a first day count and a fifth day count which was 700 and then 500 and we had hundreds most days until the very end and then it it, it started slipping what kind of feedback have we had from the teachers on whether they felt like it was successful and and how they feel like that went this 
Yeah, I was, I was talking to Ann Trader today. She's been one of our directors at Hazelwood. And they did, um, they were required to do for our elementary and middle school an I-Ready assessment, a beginning and a post assessment. So we're waiting to get those results to see what the data says. I think what she said today, um, I think it's probably pretty consistent throughout what most people would say is the students that came consistently they saw a big gain from that and people couldn't I mean people had vacations and job responsibilities and things like that but a lot of our kids came consistently we recovered um, and I just don't want to throw out a number here I'll look and see I had this earlier but the amount of credits we recovered at our high school was really impressive so we did recover and I, again, I don't want to throw out an arbitrary number here, but at one time, this was probably three or four weeks ago, we had probably recovered over 250 credits at that point. Okay, so it's that number will be even higher now for our high school students. So hopefully that will get them back on track for graduation for several of them. Good. It was just, you know, very, very expansive. It encompassed everybody that wanted to come and I think I think when you walk through those buildings every time I walk through and I saw kids there I thought this is a good thing they were really doing instruction with those kids they had a lot of fun things with them and one of the, the best things I heard about it is at 12 30 when they were leaving they would be on the car lot saying I'm going to go to grandma's house and play I'm going to go to the pool they still had the time to play and do things in the afternoon we had a lot of counties tell us they thought that was a good idea it wasn't all day long just for 30 days we are planning on doing that next summer as well this one you know was required we didn't get to do exactly how we want it you know we had to follow the letter of that law so i'm excited about next year if we can make it our own because i think we've really seen the potential of what we could do and again we were planning on doing something smaller in scale but there will be money um as, as long as dr nolte you know uh, that money will be there for summer school next year Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think it's up to me. Part of the ESSER funds are specifically um, designated for learning loss. There's a percentage. What's 20% in 20. ESSER 3. 20. And there's also going to be an additional amount of funds that will, will be, we will be able to apply for that will be for summer again. So we, we our summer, our summer, uh, endeavors will be well supported in the next few years. Okay. Good. The only other question I had for you all was do you want me to continue doing this in a work session or do you want me to do it with finance? Uh, I, I, we talked about doing it uh, like three quarterly. times a year, you know, sort of quarterly. I'd say either a work session or finance. Yeah, this was perfect. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Monday nights are usually pretty crowded. No, we don't want to do it on. We don't want to do it then. That's why we Monday have, nights are pretty crowded. I think we have work sessions for stuff like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's all. It, it's mainly me tonight with a little help from uh, Lisa and Jenny. Doctor Putnam's taking his last little break, but he'll be back on Monday. So one of the things uh, that we had mentioned to you all, but. Um, it was not very formalized and we felt like it would be uh, good to just talk about tonight in a work session was bus driver recruitment and retention okay so the principals association officers there were four of them and several of us from the central office have been working on a recruitment and retention plan especially for bus drivers um, there is a shortage of bus drivers nationwide Okay, it, you, if you've traveled like I have some, you see buses parked on the side of the road with signs on them, come drive a bus and a phone number, that kind of stuff. Um, we really, you all know that we really like to uh, sink our teeth into stuff and go after stuff. And so we don't know if we can solve this problem when it's a nationwide problem, but we would really like to be, you know, the first or one of the first school systems that figures out a way to at least mitigate the problem pretty significantly. And so we have a number of ideas. Some of those uh, would require your approval if they were related to pay. And we have a meeting uh, Monday afternoon at about 1.30 to um, refine some of our thoughts on that so we can bring you some, some stuff on Monday. 
uh, and of course if it relates to pay it would be um, part of personnel um, but anyway um, we've done a lot of things I think history is important so we've done a lot of things in the last three years not only for bus drivers but other people because we know our people really are um, the valuable resource we, we could not have done what we've done especially during COVID without them but early on even back when I was an in interim I worked with you all and we put everyone back on the pay steps and that was a good thing so they get an annual pay raise uh, we've worked really hard again with your approval to increase the number of dual employees who also drive a bus that is good for them they have essentially a full-time job or very close to it they get health benefits from the from state money rather than local money and um, it, it, it's very good for a lot of them and uh, you have you know one person doing a couple jobs and that's worked pretty well we uh, then doubled the local supplement from two percent four percent not only for bus drivers but other people we should have done that and then we uh, <laughs> took some money and actually increased the hourly rate for bus drivers a little bit a couple years ago uh, one of the things that you all have done that we're not we don't think anyone else in the state has done and I credit uh, Pat and Dean Shatley and Jason Hines for doing all this background research and you provide health insurance for folks who drive at least 20 hours we can't provide it if they drive less than that but if they drive over 20 we can pay for it if it's over 30 the state is part of the state package uh, and then we were very cognizant of our employees and student learning during COVID you all know that we did as much as we could for both groups and so that very first summer you all know that we distribute over three quarters of a million meals and that allowed a lot of our drivers who might not otherwise have employment to work that first summer and we are thankful that they did that uh, very very thankful that they did that and um, we gave them a little bit of an increased rate that first summer uh, it was it was a, a little bit more and we appreciate that and then the other thing that we talked about and I don't want to pretend that this was about our classified employees because we really were thinking about students but when we opened school last fall at the end of September for middle and high and elementary the first part of October we went five days a week and we did that for students but it also allowed our bus drivers to drive five days a week if they wanted to so we've done a lot that has not fixed the problem like I said it's it's a nationwide problem so um, here's some of the things that we were working on um, we want to um, uh, improve um, advertising, recruitment, and training. Uh, we don't know how much bang we'll get for that buck, but, but, buck, but we do know that it's pretty difficult to find someone who's willing to drive, give them the paper classroom coursework, have them do the road driving, and get them a license in hand and get them on a bus you just can't do that in a week uh, the training sessions are spread out for us a couple times a year sometimes you can squeeze someone into a training in Buncombe County or or you know over in Bryson City or somewhere Shelby or Charlotte or someone like that so one of the things that we would like to consider is possibly um, hiring someone part-time and that's what they do they help us find people they get them in a class they uh, they find out where the class is they get them scheduled they get them back here they get them with a driver and they get them back to us pretty quickly because typically when we find someone who's interested by the time we can get them licensed and trained they've taken another job uh, we think that would cost uh, under thirty thousand dollars a year and we don't think that that's something we would have to do permanently that would obviously be something that works would work in the um, 
work out of the transportation department with Mr. Sharp. The other thing that is pretty new on our radar is Mr. Sharp has uh, been talking to the people in Raleigh and we believe that we can find online coursework. We may have to huddle them up in a room here and be with them, but we could schedule that um, a little differently and that could be quicker and then we would just have to worry about the driving part. Um, one of the other things that I think allow has allowed us to um, run the buses as often as we ha have been able to is we have some pretty faithful subs that really never want a full-time route, but they are faithful. You know, they'll sub for five years. And so we've talked about with your permission of possibly creating a sub scale, a scale that is more like the regular driver scale. And so instead of them giving $12.15 or whatever that sub rate is um, for five years, that if they've really been a sub and they've subbed so many days a year, that if the second year they'd get a little more and we would have a scale for subs. That's an out of the box thought, but we think that's practical. Um, uh, we also think that um, money does help. It doesn't help completely. We were able to offer $20 an hour this summer and still didn't get a lot, but we do know that people don't want to drive for free. And so right now we're still having this debate about is that a little something for all types of drivers or do we do something like we've done in athletics which is focus on um, people who are there at the school working full time anyway. They seem um, in general to be, um, to stay with us longer. And I'm saying in general, because we have some people who only drive a bus and they have been fantastic for a long time. So that's what our meeting on Monday is about, to try to figure out what kind of pay um, increase to suggest to the board? Is it a little something for everyone or do we focus on people who we know will be on campus all day long and it will be uh, a little more likely that they'll be there uh, when the buses need to roll? So um, that is a snapshot. We're brainstorming some other things. Um, I had a meeting this afternoon with um, uh, Jenny Wood and you know, she talks to a lot of benefactors and, and they do things for us that a lot of other school systems don't have through the foundation. And she threw um, an idea or two at me that she got from a benefactor. But what I'd like to do is sort of uh, sift that through the admin folks um, early next week before we throw out something that might be a great idea or might be really dumb. So. Um, so I think the things that would come to you obviously would be the uh, part-time uh, person and the pay raise. And so I just wanted to share all that with you and then see if you wanted to talk about it or ask questions. Um, it is a nationwide problem, but we do, we don't want that to be an excuse. We, we'd like for that to be a challenge for us. Got one question about it's not about pay scale, but I'm trying to remember in the past now because you have to have your medical card updated every two years as well. And there for a while, I think we were paying for that, but then somehow we didn't pay for the medical card examination, and that might be just another little quirk that might help them if we can pay for that medical examination. I know now that the and I know a lot of our bus drivers now they do go to the chiropractor center up here in Waynesville, which it was a Active. If you went to the, yeah, if you went, family circle. yeah, right there at Family Circle, they've, uh, that's where I had my medical card update as well. And the pricing they gave our school system employees and plus just like me and an individual coming in there was much better. The state was, you know, most places you go to, doctor's offices, urgent care, place like that, they're 140, 150 bucks for that exam. Yeah. And he was charged like 90 bucks a piece. Yeah, I know. I, I, I dropped my bus license, uh, about four years ago, and that was one of the factors. And the other was that I was not sitting at a school every day where I, you know, could drive. But still, 
I wrote that down. Uh, I think we are now again, but I couldn't remember what that was. I, I, t I tell you what I, what I remember is that um, there were some individual principals who would look at someone and say, I'll use some of my school money to pay for that if you'll go get it and bring me the receipt. But I'm not sure we did it universally. I, I personally think that's a pretty good idea. I have no idea what that mm -hmm. cost would be, but we would certainly calculate that before we brought it back to you. I just, uh, I think it's good that y'all are proactively looking for solutions instead of just bringing us problems. As I was listening to a story the other day and Buncombe County's having the same problem and oh yeah looking for all that and so uh, I think it's I think it would be good if we could make it uh, a little bit easier to to recruit and create a better environment a better situation all the way around and I don't know exactly what that looks like but uh, I think you've got the right group because those principals have to live it and breathe it every day or drive it whatever so I'm glad it's happening anyway yeah, we, we've invited the president of the Principals Association to meet with us on Monday. Yeah, I like I like a lot of the ideas you've thrown out too. That's a well, there are two of them that would or maybe maybe the subscale thing too. That would be something. I like that idea. So three of them uh, around you know a few of them that we we would need to bring to you, and that would need to be your approval item. I think. Anything we can do, I mean, I I searched high and low for a driver at my business as well, and I mean, it's to find a good driver is the gods and the stars and everything else has to line up, I think. <laughs> but I think if you put things in your favor, it's going to help. Yep. And amazingly, what happened with mine is just a sign, just advertising. Uh, just stuck up out in the yard. Uh, I will tell you a story that Brooke, uh, Brooke told me today, uh, so, or yesterday, I can't remember when it was. So she was calling Stephen Sharp, you know, to check his schedule so he could meet with us on Monday. And, and as part of the conversation with her, he said to her, you know that music that plays when we call you and we put you on hold? Um, and we advertise for bus drivers on that. So it just tells you he's thinking, you know, that Not plus hard. the online learning. I mean, so, you know, uh, uh, we, we'll consider about anything. You know, we certainly can't do everything that, that uh, comes forward and that we think about, but we're not opposed to considering and thinking about anything that might be practical. Dr. Bill, one thing I forgot to do at the beginning of the meeting was to let everybody know where board members were. Uh, Mr. Nesbitt is out of town. Uh, Mr. Kirkpatrick is joining us remotely. Um, Ronnie Clark is still in the hospital, so continue to pray for him. I, I did speak with him earlier this afternoon, and he seems to be doing pretty well. He said that he would call in, but there was a lot of traffic in and out of his room, so the confidentiality in some of the topics might not be uh and he's medicated <laughs> <laughs> and i appreciate the fact he admitted that he says i'm medicated i may not make a good decision so i, I said i advise you not to vote either yeah. but i said the only thing we're going to do is the work session so and, and, and along those same lines mr francis i mentioned when some of you were coming in that uh mr smathers called in and checked the agenda tonight but he's with his family sure Dr. Putnam's vacation. Yeah. And we want to remember Ima Jean, Jimmy's wife. She's struggling, and Jimmy, we pray for you and her. And I know you've uh, spent a huge amount of time with her, which is impressive. I know you, you're a good person. I know you're going to do it anyway. So let her know that we're pulling for her, okay? I will. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for all the prayers and support, too. I should have done that to start with, but anyway, I'd never, never too late to do something like that. It's a work session. Correct. Uh, so, uh, members of the board, I think the next item is just a, a update on uh, state COVID rules uh, and the update. Um, I will not attempt to uh, steal any of Dr. Putnam's under. He will provide a procedural update on Monday night at the board meeting 
and like I mentioned to you with the policy adjustment that's pending he will spend some time with all staff on the 12th talking about some procedural things but there are you know probably several things I can um, share and and you all may want to discuss um, so as of today none of the rules from the governor or health and human services have really changed there have been um, a couple press conferences since the 21st um, I have listened I listened to the first one and I listened to the second half of uh, the second one but other people were listening to the whole second one and so none of the those rules have changed since uh, the 21st um, other school systems in the region are making the same kinds of decisions that we are making um, about masking and and other things related to that and um, you know the, thus far most of them have picked optional um, in the region I had a regional superintendents meeting in Asheville this morning and as you can imagine we had lots of really fun things to talk <laughs> about uh, but so n nothing has really changed in in terms of state rules uh, we've had a couple conversations with Dr. Jabron, and we are planning a meeting. When I say we, uh, uh, Dr. Putnam and I are planning a meeting with Dr. Jabin and Mrs. Henderson to talk about measures that we would use administratively when we're making decisions about school schedules and things like that. Now, we did that last year, uh, and I think the stuff that we used last year worked really well, but it is a new year, and we have a uh, we, we have a new increase and in, you know things some things are better and some things may not be uh, if you look at you know vaccination availability and other things so what we used last year was uncontrolled spread of the virus on campus and I can remember dr. Putnam and I nights and weekends uh, talking to Patrick the, the former public health director or Dr. Jabin and they would call us or we would call them when we knew about a case and I can remember being at home one night going what are we going to do if we get a cluster you know what are we going to do if we get a cluster what are we going to do and I, I got on the phone with Dr. Jabin and he said well that's not good but we really need to worry about spread that we can't stop with isolations or quarantines and so we adopted at that time it was early in the fall it was around October when we were first coming back in person so one of our measures last year was uh, uncontrolled spread and we only had about a, a dozen or less confirmed cases um, most of those were employees early on in October and then a student or two at the end of the year um, and then the other uh, measure that you all I'm sure will remember uh, very well when we hit that winter surge and we went into the Christmas holidays New Year's we were really concerned about staffing and with your permission we actually uh, extended our break there for three more days to make sure we could get back and check our numbers and make sure we would staff so those are two that I feel really good about and we'll be suggesting that we use and then we, you know we'll just have a good meeting dr. Jabin we've worked with him a long time he's been very helpful um, in managing the day-to-day -day kind of stuff and so we have that meeting scheduled on Monday um, we didn't have to do a whole lot close to a couple classes um, last year and then we had lots of individuals who had to be isolated or quarantined mainly because they were a close contact of someone in their home uh, or they went to a New Year's Eve party or a birthday party or something like that not at school um, we also met with principals uh, late in July at this point Brooke I can't remember the dates the 26th and 27th or 27th and 28th uh, Dr. Putnam covered a lot of procedures with them um, and then you know we have people who are calling us obviously as school gets starts we always get additional calls and uh, uh, we're talking to those folks and trying to give them updates uh, 
the only thing I think that's really unknown, and we're checking on this, Pat's checking on it and everything else, is uh, masking related to buses. We have double and triple checked pre-K and child care. And uh, everyone tells us that's uh, our decision as per the toolkit changes. And we haven't gotten a consensus on the bus thing, but if it is different than what we have decided here, we'll get with you quickly uh, on that. So, so any, I mean, that's a pretty broad general update. Uh, Dr. Putnam will be a little more technical with some of his things that he does on Monday. Dr. Bill, I've talked to you about this. Dr. Javen did reach out to me and ask me if the board wanted to meet. And I said, you know, that's our administration's position. I mean, that's their job. And, and does anybody from the board feel different than that? I, I felt like that last year uh, the administration was on top of things. They are the ones that's got the year of experience, year and a half of experience with this. and. And uh, quite honestly, I'm, I don't feel qualified to even, I mean, we can talk about it, but I think that the day-to-day -day operations is our administration as it relates to all school matters, not just the mask, the COVID-19 spread, the possible threat or whatever. So, you might have any different opinion on that? No, I'm in agreement with you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with you that uh, we do, they, they're doing a good job. We need to continue to let them do their job and just give them the support that they need and ask for. Okay. We're glad to do it. That's what you pay us to do. Whether it's, uh, you know, uh, fire alarms or, or snow or COVID or heaven forbid another ransomware attack, you know, whatever it is, internet service, that's, <laughs> that's what we do. And we're glad, we're glad to jump on it with our uh, with our partners, whoever they are, you know, with COVID, it's certainly public health, but, you know, sometimes it's law enforcement or other folks, but we're glad to do that. And certainly when it uh, calls for your action, we let you know in a hurry and you all have been really good to meet almost over meet during COVID. And so we're, we're glad to manage it. I, I appreciate the quick response uh, and the information flow that we get through our text, our group text, it goes fast. I was coming by Tuscola the other day, I said, I wonder what happened here, and I looked down, there's a text. Dr. Bill says a student got hit after somebody ran a red light. I said, well, there's the answer, <laughs> carry <Yeah>. on. <laughs> and yeah. I appreciate that, because I mean, it's timely, because people call you up sometimes and ask, what's going on? You know, and I appreciate it. Glad to do it. <clears throat> um, board, uh, the only other thing that I have in open session, I do want some time in closed session to review some personnel matters. Um, uh, I don't think it'll require any of your action, but we have so much going on that Brooke and I thought it might be really good if you all look at the agenda, make sure we haven't missed anything. And we may have even suggested an addition. Did you put that last thing on this afternoon? Uh, Lisa presenting the budget stuff. I know it's unusual for us to ask you to look at that, but I, I, I think it's good. It's just busy. Yeah, I like to see it. Yeah, and we may be able to do that in future work sessions. But we just uh, we're glad yeah. to do what we do. But man, it's uh, it's it's fun right now. There's a lot going on. We did on. have a formal request for uh, from the Farm Bureau to come. Don Smart wanted to speak and. I felt like that, you know, I just advised them to come during the open comment section, public comments, since it really doesn't need to be an agenda item. And if the board feels led to do so, we can extend the three minute deal or we can put it on the agenda. What are y'all's thoughts? Just leave it like it is or? Yes, how much time does it need? I don't think I need a lot of time, but I. You know, Don, it gets started. <laughs> No, <laughs> you better agenda item if you think he's going to run over because we don't want to 
Right. We don't want to okay. set a precedent. Brooke, you would our, just go ahead and change the – add um, Mr. Don Smart, Haywood County Farm Bureau, just information only. That's all we have, uh, board, um, unless you all have other um, things you want to talk about in the work session before I do the personnel updates. Okay. Can't think anything else? I need a we'll motion. I enjoyed your summer break. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline and I did get uh, one week away, uh, but the rest of it, we've been happy to be at work. Need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Mr. Burnett's made a motion, seconded by. I'll second. Mr. Francis, any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Good job, Mr. Kirkpatrick. Motion carries. We're going to, uh, we will not come back and reconvene, Ms. Ross. There'll be no action taken. That's fine. I okay. need to speak to a couple of you, though, so okay. we will wait. All right.